Hello everyone and welcome to Network Labs. Today in this video, I will show how to configure and implement QNQ in a service provider network using Juniper routers. In the diagram, CE2 has four sites that need a transparent connection through the service provider network. Site 1 and Site 2 are in the same network, while Site 3 and Site 4 in other network. The client or CVLAN for Site 1 and Site 2 is 601, while 602 for Site 3 and Site 4. And the service or SVLAN within the service provider is 600. Since the first video in this series already configures both the IGP or OSPF and MPLS LDP, the service provider is ready. Let us proceed and configure our PE routers and CE2 sites. Let us start in PER1 facing CE2 site 3. First, configure the interface facing CE2 R1 site 3. Set a basic description for identification of the link. Edit the physical interface. Enable VLAN tagging to support one or more tags. Set the interface to support different types of Ethernet encapsulations. Next, create a logical or sub-interface. We will use the service VLAN, which is 600. Enter the logical interface. Set the encapsulation to VLAN VPLS. Now, set the CVLAN. Here, we can set the specific VLAN or list and range. Let us use the VLAN ID list. Let us include both the client VLANs of CE2. Next, use the command set input VLAN map, followed by push to specify the packets from the CVLAN interface to the SVLAN interface, tagged with the SVLAN ID. Then use the command set input, VLAN map, followed by the SVLAN ID, which is 600. Next, use the command set output, VLAN map, followed by POP to specify that the 802.1QS VLAN tag is removed as packets exit an SVLAN interface. Then set family to VPLS. The configuration of the interface facing CE2 Site 3 is done. The next step is to deploy a routing instance to generate the customer's MAC address table and associate the interface facing the customer. Next, bind the logical interface to the routing instance.
set the protocols to VPLS without tunnel services. Set the circuit ID for the VPLS routing instance. Last, specify the neighbor PE router's ID. For PER1, the neighbor PE is PER4. Let us verify the configuration. Type commit check. An error prompts that the routing instance needs to support family VPLS. Edit the routing instance. Set the instance type to VPLS. The commit check is now successful. Commit and exit the configuration. PER1 facing C, E2 site 3 configuration is done. Let us go and configure PER4 facing C, E2 site 4. To save time let us copy the script from PER1 since the configuration is almost identical. Edit the interface description and the neighbor IP address. Then paste to PER4. Commit and save the configuration. We have completed PER1 and PER4 for sites 3 and 4 of CE2. Now let us go to PER2 and input similar configuration. Edit the interface and description. Then the neighbor IP address, which is PER5. Commit and save the configuration. PER2 is done. Go to PER5 and apply the same configuration. Modify the interface description and the neighbor IP address. Commit and save the configuration. All the PE routers are done. Before we proceed with CE2 sites configuration, let us verify the status of each VPLS on all the PE routers. In PER1, the VPLS connection is now up facing PER4. The same status in PER4 facing PER1. The VPLS connection in PER2 facing PER5 is also up. And the same status for PER5 facing PER2.
the MAC address table for the VPLS is still empty. Now let us configure CE2 sites, starting with CE2R1 Site 3. Configure the interface facing PER1. Enable the physical interface. Then create a dot one q sub-interface. Associate the VLAN ID, which is 602. Set the IP address assigned. Apply the same configuration in CE2R2 Site 4. Assign the IP address in the same network with Site 3. In C, E2 Site 1, create VLAN 601. Next, create interface VLAN 601. Configure the IP address. Then, enable the VLAN interface. Enter the physical interface. Set the trunk encapsulation to dot one q Then configure the interface to trunk mode. Tag VLAN 601. Apply the same configuration in CE2 Site 2. Both the service provider and customer devices are done. Let us conduct ping testing on all CE2 sites to check the end-to-end -end connectivity. CE2 Site 3 and Site 4 can now ping each other via CVLAN 602. CE2, Site 1 and Site 2, can also ping each other via CVLAN 601. In PER1, both the MAC address of CE2, Site 3 and Site 4 are now installed on the routing instance of service VLAN 600. In PER2, the MAC address of CE2 Site 1 and Site 2 are also installed on the routing instance of SVLAN 600. With this, we have successfully implemented Q and Q tunneling in our service provider network using Juniper routers. I hope that this is informative to you and thank you for watching.